What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to mine Dynex on Hive OS. Now, I know there's some videos out there covering how to mine it, but I think there's some extra steps and some tips and tricks that you might find helpful. So I thought I'd make another video about it. Now, before we get into it, if you would, do me a favor. If this is the type of content that you find helpful and appreciate, do me a favor and hit that like and hit the subscribe. And speaking of things that you appreciate, I want to say thank you to Influence. You guys may know him on YouTube as Hack. And he's been extremely helpful in sharing this information about Dynex since the beginning of January. And there's a lot of things that we're going to cover in here, but uh, just a couple of things that we'll start out with. So if you join Discord, um, you can find this in the Dynex uh, channel. And what we've got here is the custom miner installation URL, as well as some pool information and then extra arguments that you might find helpful. There's some additional content within here that we'll cover here in just a moment, but also another place that you can find some helpful commands is going to be uh, GitHub specifically for Dynex, and you'll see the following commands in there. Now, just something to be aware of, there is more than one wallet currently for Dynex. Most people are aware that there has been some issues with the mobile web wallet, or we should really refer to this as just the browser wallet. Um, I think they've got most of those issues worked out. There was a lot of traffic uh, yesterday because obviously Son of a Tech made a video about this. I made a video about it and it's gaining some traction and I think that had a lot to do with some of the crashes that you might have experienced but just in case you did not know there is also an Android app as well as an iOS app I do not recommend installing this on your personal phone now if you have an old phone that's laying in a drawer and something that doesn't have any of your pertinent information on it you may want to use that instead and then I believe if you are trying to run a node uh, in the download, you are also going to find a desktop wallet as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at HiveOS real quick. So I would assume that most of you running HiveOS are familiar with how to add a coin to your wallet. But just in case, what you're going to do is you're going to select wallets and then you're going to go to add a wallet. Then you're going to select the ticker symbol, which is going to be DNX and then you're going to paste your wallet address in here and then you're going to give it a name so in this case it would be Dynex Web Wallet and then you're going to click create now once you've done that you should see that new coin or new wallet and you should be able to add it to a flight sheet now I've already created a flight sheet but let's go ahead and hit edit here so that you can see what it looks like so obviously you're going to select DNX as your coin. You're going to select the wallet that you just created. And then you're going to select configure and miner for your pool. And we're going to use a custom miner. And you can type that in or you can just scroll down in alphabetical order, find custom. Once you've selected that, you're going to select setup miner config. And you're going to paste the installation URL right here. Once you do that, it should auto-populate the miner name as Dynex Solve, and it should automatically change your hash algorithm to Dynex Solve as well. Now, one thing that tripped me up was selecting the wallet and worker template. It is very important that you only have percent %WAL%. Percent. I tried using one of the templates, which include dot .worker underscore name, and it would not start mining. I, I ran into some errors. So as far as I know, that's how you have to do it for now. And then as far as your pool is concerned, uh, you can get that information directly from Discord in our Dynex channel, or you can join uh, Dynex's Discord as well. And then we have our password as percent worker underscore name percent. I believe that is also imperative as well. And then these extra arguments here, I don't know if Son of a Tech covered this in his video, but some of these are important to be aware of. So first of all, you definitely want to disable the CPU. And then 
by selecting multi GPU, this is going to tell it that you're, you, you're not trying to mine this with just one single GPU in the rig. And then the dash adjust 1.192 is kind of like a little bit of extra overclocking. And let me see if I can show you what I mean by that. So I might have to scroll up here. Bear with me for just a moment as I find this. Again, shout out to Influence who uh, was kind enough to share what this meant. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Okay, he says, try reducing the dash adjust parameter to try and get more chips. Say, dash adjust 1.191. If you get a memory error, you can try adjust 1.1912, etc. The lower the value, the more chips you can fit, which equals more hash rate. If it's too low, you will get out of memory error on the minor start. So something obviously very important to be aware of. And then some additional things here. Uh, we've got an issue when you have more than six CPUs, excuse me, GPUs. So let's see if we can find where that was referred to here. So if you've got a weak CPU, uh, you're potentially going to run into a bottleneck. So he says, uh, another thing to monitor is pool hash rate and the minor hash rate. They should be the same. Depending on your CPU, you might not be able to handle more than six cards. So if the difference in hash is around one GPU less, it's better to run a second instance of Dynex Solve for that GPU or to switch the amount of cards that differ from the pool hash rate to another algo. You may use in Dynex Solve extra config dash disable dash GPU and then which GPUs you want to disable. So yeah, in case you guys are running into issues where uh, the hash rate within the miner is not matching on the pool so for example what you're looking for specifically is this number here and this number here to be pretty much identical if they're not you may perhaps be running into a CPU bottleneck and you need to try some of those things also I believe uh, using wild rig multi we may trigger a bash script to run the second Dynex solve instance Edit your flight sheet and add Wild Rig Multi as the second miner. Uh, in the Wild Rig Multi Miner setup, you're going to put Wallet and Worker Template NA, Extra Argument Configs, uh, dash dash execute dash at dot start, forward slash home, forward slash user, Dynex second dot sh dash dash execute dash wait, and then a time frame there to wait. Also, in extra config, disable the GPUs you need to run in the second instance. So here you would tell it specifically, you know, any GPUs after six, so seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. So yeah, this this information is going to be extremely helpful, especially for those of you out there that have more than six GPUs or your CPU is on the lower end. So getting back to hash rates and overclocks, now. I don't believe that you can set your overclocks within the flight sheet. I may be wrong. Um, I know that obviously you can set your uh, overclocks within Wild Rig, but if you are using Dynex Solve as a custom miner, I did not see any of those command lines to set overclocks, so I am using in VTool. And each GPU is going to be slightly different. However, a lot of them are the same. So you can find most of them by going to hashrate.no. 
So it's, for example, we're looking at a 3060 here. If we select Dynex, it's going to tell you that your core offset should be 255, your core clock locked at 2100, and memory locked at 810. Now it's going to vary slightly depending on which GPU you're using. So for example, let's take a look at a 3090 and see how similar it is on Dynex. So in this case, it's identical. 255, 2100, 810. But what about a 20 series card? Let's take a look and see what we can find here. Ah, here's a 1080. Let's take a look at 10 series cards. So in this instance, you're going to put your core clock offset at 90, core clock locked at 2000, but you're not locking the memory here. You're just setting your power limit. And let's take a look at a few others. So let's find a 20 series card here. There we go, a 2070. So on a 2070, uh, same thing, core clock offset at 90, core clock locked at 1980. But in this case, on a 20 series card, you are going to lock your memory at 810. Let's see what else we got. So how about a 1660 Super? That's probably a common card. So we're gonna lock core clock offset, or excuse me, lock core at 2100 and use core offset of 180. Uh, and even though this is a 10 series card, technically we are locking the memory at 810 here as well. So yeah, hopefully you guys find this helpful. Um, I know there's going to be another miner eventually. And some of my concerns for mining Dynex specifically is going to be in regards to the fluctuation in power. Now, somebody left a comment on the previous video when I talked about mining Dynex, and they were concerned about the fluctuation in power. And let's face it, any type of fluctuation in power or heat is an enemy to any piece of electronics. And if you're like me and you are hyper aware and sensitive to any kind of degradation on your equipment and don't want to have to deal with warranty or anything like that. Um, just be aware that with the fluctuation of power, it's going to fluctuate heat as well. And I'm not a big fan of that. I really hope that this gets addressed sometime in the near future. Perhaps it'll be a newer version of Dynex Solve or perhaps it will be another minor yeah, you can see these uh, wattages varying drastically just within a few seconds of refreshing. And you know what? While we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other GPUs that I have here. So we've got a 3080 and 3070, getting 90 hash on a 3080 at 94 watts, getting 72 hash on a 3070 at 88 watts. And let's go back to this other rig, Tatooine. And we've got 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080 Ti, 3080, 3070, and a 3070 Ti. And you can see that the 3060 Ti is performing just as well as a 3070, if not a little bit better on the power usage. And what's really going to be surprising is a 3090. Uh, there are several uh, GPUs that do considerably well uh, compared to the other GPUs that you would think would do just as good. So for example, a 3090 here is getting 225 hash at 92 watts currently. Uh, let's refresh this. Usually it sits at about 140 watts. Uh, but you can see this 3080 is getting 90 hash at 105 watts. So a 3090, a 3060, a 3050, uh, some of the older GPUs that have a lot of VRAM Basically, as Son of a Tech alluded to, your VRAM is really what's making the biggest difference here. But anyways, I hope you guys find this information helpful. If you did, please do me a favor. Hit that like and hit the subscribe on your way out, and I'll see you on the next one.